Hey, welcome back, big boy. I'm in the squeaky chair today. I don't know why I keep focusing on the facts around the chair I'm sitting in, but <laughs> squeak, squeak, here I am. Uh, I wanted to talk for a little bit about the air war in this game. And you may say, hey, Kevin, why are we talking about that? Because you're supposed to be playing this game and show me what's going on. And isn't that air war horrible and long and difficult and complicated and all the rest of it? And <clears throat> quite frankly, it's really not that hard and not that big a deal if I am indeed playing it correctly, which, you know, that could always be wrong. Uh, we're very early in the first turn and I'll, I'm not sure how long this video is going to get depending on how much I show you of the cruise missile phase and stuff like that if we actually get to that or not. But I thought it might be worthwhile just trying to get our hands and our minds around the air war exercise. Uh, I got a little spun up initially uh, in, during the setup with these uh, basing or uh, holding boxes here in these bases and I think this just denotes the number of bases you have and I think actually now at right this very moment as I look at it <coughs> I think what we do with these when they're when they're destroyed was we do, we put this one of these markers here somewhere maybe this is what we do maybe we put one of these markers down here I don't know and then and then that transfers to the to the points track or something like that so we can keep track of how many we've lost and maybe that has an impact or something like that I'm not sure but Really what ends up happening is you have all your aircraft here and they're allocated across these, notionally allocated across the various air bases. Obviously there's US Air and there's uh, Diego Garcia and stuff like that. When I say US Air, US Carrier based air. And so they have a different box and you return them to their flow, to the flown box of that location, obviously enough. It's all pretty straightforward stuff. Mm -hmm. Nothing you haven't seen before. Same for the Chinese, right? Chinese got their ready flown and whatever. And there's a, you know, three IROP uh, holding boxes here and three IROP, uh, three uh, PRC holding boxes there. Uh, one, you know, so straightforward. Really, everything's gonna stay here until it's flown, then it goes to here. And then if it aborts, it goes to here and you've got to roll dice to get from here to here and then dice to get here to here, I think. Uh, maybe, I don't know, I've got to check on that. I haven't really got that far, I don't really care. I've read the rules ages ago, but I'm not worried about how that happens because we just want to blow things up. So, <clears throat> given, I, I, I kind of approached the, the air war with the philosophy that I wanted to maximize my air superiority in the first turn. I wanted to totally take advantage of the game turn one advantage, uh, 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 benefits of attacking as the US allied uh, you know, Roy, uh, Republic of India, uh, the Roy team, right? And uh, wanted to absolutely massively degrade the uh, SAM AA and detection capabilities of the Pakis or the non-allied forces they're called the PRC and Pakistanis <clears throat> so I went very very heavy on air superiority as you can see we actually had one two three four uh, four units plus these guys here there's a four and two so it's eight ten and another bunch of guys here whole and a plus I think I also had a couple of uh, naval uh, no I didn't have any uh, uh, naval units so when the PRC saw what was going up, and keep in mind it's overcast, so some units couldn't fly, and we just moved them to the flown box uh, because they, they couldn't fly. Uh, these two dudes here got shifted to the flown box because of uh, special forces operations that uh, negatively affected. There's a, there's a two strike there and a two strike on the map down there where we did damage to the airfields with special forces actions in Islamabad and some other place I can't pronounce. Right, so air war, what actually physically happens when you try and get air superiority? Well, both sides place up, and whoever has initiative, I assume, would put theirs up second, but uh, both sides put their air up, and uh, the the uh, Chinese put up uh, six units, <clears throat> excuse me, really because they needed to keep some for ground support because they know they're going to get attacked this turn. And only one managed to survive. All the others were either, actually they put seven units up, they were either eliminated 
uh, we lost one over here, see? Or uh, they were reduced and aborted, or just aborted. So that's a little stack right there. And there's the dead guy. <clears throat> okay. How does combat work? There's a lot of, so you put your units up and then you have to fight for that superiority and actually ha engage in uh, you know, physical jousting in the air. So this is a great example here. <clears throat> this five, for some reason I'm kind of clogged up at the moment. This five uh, double star zero two unit is a all weather, the A, uh, all weather unit and it is a stealth unit and it has a, a long range capability. That's the first star or the second star. And the first star is its uh, standoff capability, which means that they can fire missiles from a bunch of miles away. So that's we're talking a hundred miles away. And uh, then closer range, it's 50 to hundred miles or 30 to hundred miles, something like that. And then you get into dogfight mode. <clears throat> so there are three stages in each combat that you're gonna conduct. Anyway, think, wow, that's going to be a whole bunch of die rolling. Well, it actually goes fairly quickly, particularly if you're the allied player and you're, you're rolling two dudes in. So in most cases, we had two aircraft uh, doubled up against the, the PRC. But in, for instance, in this particular, uh, I don't know which combat it was, it was but uh, there's, a, there's a choice, there's a mechanism to allow you to choose which who fights who and that's all driven off this AWACS chart over here which was at two so the US would choose two combats PRC would choose a combat or the Pakistanis uh, and then the US would choose two the Pakistanis or the PRC would choose the next and the, the Pakis uh, the, the, the PRC got one good fight in right they chose uh oh, they chose a four based actually I think it was this guy that took a re reduction now they chose this unit here to fight. It was a five. Okay, maybe they didn't do that. I'm sure there was a four here. This is what it was. It was this four. Uh, so they were going to go into this fight with a plus on the plus one column because they have five and these guys have four. And But you then you have to adjust for the pilot skill, which is minus two and minus one. And uh, that becomes a DRM to, to the uh, die roll. And then you just jump on this little table here that's got the combat differential for the two units and then you look at look at the result and cross-reference it and make sure you add in all the DRMs and that's it you do that at the long range standoff and dogfight then that combat is resolved and then you move to the next one so some of them happen simultaneously some happen one before the other depending on uh, the, the current status of the you know who's firing what and whether there's two guys fighting or one guy fighting all pretty straightforward. And it really, it only took 15 minutes to get through, what was it, 10, maybe 10 minutes to ostensibly get through, maybe, I don't know, what, uh, two, four, five, I guess seven combats, basically. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, pretty quick. And that, I was, I was relatively happy with that. I was expecting it to be a lot more complex and a lot more difficult. So, while it may consume some time, I think, in this particular scenario, at the very least, uh, there is a, there's a tendency, as you can see with the number of units here versus the number of units over here, there's gonna be this tendency to have massive superiority for the, for the uh, allied forces and the non-allied forces are really gonna to struggle to get units uh, safely on a mission. Because what's gonna happen from now, for the rest of the turn, uh, we're gonna move into the air naval phase or further into the air naval phase. And then we're gonna get into the first strike phase. And so we're gonna launch cruise missiles. And then we're going to launch, um, <clears throat> we're going to launch, I need to explain one other thing. I'm gonna cross my, cross my fingers and try to remember. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to launch strikes. I'm going to use these aircraft over here to conduct strikes and these guys can do strikes as well and these will be our escort and or intercept units which is why i i really kind of went overboard here with the with the uh potential to do intercepts because i, I want to knock i want to i want to fight as many of these aircraft that are trying to go uh in to support the uh, the forces on the ground, and they're only going to have one escort. So only one mission, only one critical mission is going to get an escort. That's a very, very tough unit, and I will, I will pop up my best guy, this uh, optional unit, uh, this F-22A, uh, 
we allocated the extra victory points to allow that to be used in the game. <clears throat> Didn't really do a whole lot so far, but that's fine. All right, now what, I, what else I was gonna tell you was this. Uh, we did the, some wild weasel attacks, which are anti, anti uh, SAM, anti air uh, missions. And those wild weasels are, it's a cool little uh, effect. Basically what you're doing is attacking a track. Right, you're attacking the the anti-aircraft detect and SAM tracks down there. <clears throat> and I'm gonna walk us through that in the second second video because the, the, those tracks were attacked by cruise missiles. The net of all this here, what ends up with this S superiority is we and we tally up the number of units left over and we get some ratio and that's going to determine the detection, the, the current air superiority range and it's going to allow us to then have a detection range on the map. So for the, I believe this is how it works anyway, so for, because we had more than five to one we're gonna be in the anywhere range, which means I've basically got full, full, uh, full visibility due to my innate recon that I will have on the map as a result of my air superiority efforts. If I had less than five to one, say I just had a one and a half to one, but less than three to one, Situation, I would only have 15 hex visibility range from airfields or, or, or airfields and air bases. Yes, air bases and airfields. I would have a, a 15 hex range. Now on a single map game, we're pretty much gonna be in you know pretty terrific shape no matter what. There's a fair few air bases scattered around uh -huh. the map for both sides. So, Allies are gonna have lots and lots of coverage. Pakistanis, not so much. Very representative of what perhaps we would be expecting to be seeing in the, in the game. All right, I think that's roughly how the air war works. It's very interesting because you've got to choose your, your strategy here. How, how big do you want your air superiority to be? Turn one, because uh, the other impact here is it moves the AWACS track along, which is going to allow you to then, uh, in the following turn, determine who attacks who in the other in the other scenarios. Sorry, in the in the next turn, uh, the next uh, air superiority phase. So lots of little choices to be made here. Get to conduct some combat, and you get to fly F-16s and F-15s and F-35As against uh, you know various Soviet. Uh, units in the J13, J31s and J10s and all that sort of good stuff. So cool stuff. I'm gonna stop it there. Next video we'll see, let's talk about cruise missiles and ballistic missiles and how they might work, scuds and stuff like that.